Because if they can kill you, then your blood ascends to heaven and purifies you so that you can be saved and not be a sinner. So they have to kill you to save you. you get that? I know it's bizarre, but that's what they believe. Really. Sounds almost like jihad, at least the fundamentalist interpretation of it. Exactly. Exactly. And they have a way of blaming people before them, scriptures before them, things that happened a hundred years ago, things that happened thousands of years ago, as a justification. Everybody except themselves. The responsibility for their own acts is non-existent. However, in all fairness, you need to realize that everybody in the group, from the time they're born, is taught into slavery. Everybody. The number one way of enslaving a person is isolation, then fear, ignorance, and the consequences. So even though the 13th Amendment supposedly outlawed slavery almost 150 years ago, it's still alive and well in certain pockets of the U.S. Ignorance and fear from a bloodthirsty God enslaves thousands of people in this country. Thousands of people in this country. Now, does this, does this have anything to do with your living today here in Humboldt County? It has everything to do with my living here in Humboldt County. I came to Humboldt County to save my sister's life. My late husband and I, and I hadn't been married to him very long because I had escaped Utah, came here to hide her. Her name is Irene Spencer. She was one that was on the list to be killed, Herbal's death list for blood atonement. Incidentally, Herbal was her brother-in-law. And he didn't like her. He thought that she just might tell somebody something. So she was to be killed. She got her seven youngest kids, she had 13, in a very small Mazda car and headed to the United States border. 150 miles inside the border, the car broke down. She asked the highway patrol to call us. We went and got her and brought her home. We were living in Vegas. We moved up here to hide her. Today, she's a New York Times best-selling author. She has had the courage to write her life. She's the author of Shattered Dreams, and she is also the author of Cult Insanity, which tells all about these murders, and the indoctrination, and the killing in the name of God, and the sanctification, etc., etc., etc. So, yes, she's the reason that I'm here. She's gone on. I'm still here. <laughs> and my husband died. But I love Humboldt County. It's beautiful. Uh, I understand other writers have also come forward to share their stories from inside the, the, the cults, inside these compounds. I'm really proud of how many writers and speakers have dared to step forward now. If you go on the web and you start looking these up, you'll see several books. Some by my nieces, some by cousins, women that finally had the courage to say, hey, this is my story, this is real, this isn't just an isolated thing, it's real. And in that respect, it is so wonderful to realize that the media has been kind enough and understanding enough to give voice to those who have the courage to speak. Because in giving voice to those that have the courage to speak, they gave us an opportunity to speak for those who dare not speak. And in airing this reality, it has helped to weaken the chains of ignorance that are holding these people bondage. And more and more women are getting away. And they're stronger because they know that in their fear and in their courage, they are no longer alone. There are several of us. And we're there. And really that's the true defeat of these cult leaders who would keep women as slaves. Instead, women are finding their voice. That is correct. Using 
it has been brought up to my attention that, wow, you know, what is this, a campaign against polygamy? No, it is not. It's a campaign against the slavery of women and children that are held through ignorance, fear, and threats of death if they don't yield their bodies and their lives to men that claim that that is God's purpose for them and they have no other. That is what it is against. When freedom of religion is used to take freedom away from others, it's very, very pathetic. Many times, many times in history, in my life I've seen polygamous raids, they brought people forward like they did in Texas. Sometimes during election years they were going to do something about it. Most of the time, these people were paraded before the great dragon of the law, the dragon that had no teeth. No teeth? The reason it had no teeth is because it's very, very difficult in a country based on religious freedom to cross the line and get enough evidence to prove that it is slavery. Because we have religious freedom. But children that are raised to believe in a bloodthirsty God that has the right to kill them for disobedience are not free. And when those children become 18 years old or 21 years old and they stand up before the law and they say, I choose my life, they're not free because they can't unchoose their life. They can't leave. They are there by blood covenant oaths. So when you see those women from the compound of yearning for Zion, the way they talk, how they carry themselves and what they say is not, is not the statement of free women. But don't judge them. You'd do the same thing if your children were there. I know. That's where I came from. And by the time they reach the majority, 18 or 21, they've already been in this covenant and they've already had several children that are still under the control of this cult. The children, according to the religion, do not belong to the women. They belong to the men. So in leaving, you may never get your children. That alone is enough to keep most women there. Just that. The men have the right to do what they want with the children when the children are old enough to marry or barter off or whatever they want to do. The women have no say so. If a child dies, so what? You'll have another one next year or some other wife will. But birth control is not an option. The belief, the religious belief is that a man will spawn enough children to planet his, to populate his entire planet. And he's going to be given a planet in eternity and he's going to be a god. Now they don't know anything about interbreeding and genetics. That every child on this planet is going to be his in the name of God. And if you follow the news, you realize that some of these cults aren't far enough removed and there have been problems with interbreeding. However, ignorance cannot be absolved through punishment. You might put a stone or two in the way, but they believe in suffering. If you die, that's when you get saved. Taliban like, you betcha. If you die doing God's work, you have a free ticket to the highest degree of glory. So when you suffer, you're saving up brown stamps like for rewards in heaven. So suffering is good. And it's very, very difficult to help them because they're so terrified and afraid. It takes a long time, it takes a lot of understanding, and it takes compassion because they're all in bondage to the ignorance. Ignorance is not absolved through punishment. It is not. It's absolved through wisdom. If you can change their thinking, you will change their actions forever. But in order to change their thinking, you need to remove the fear. One never thinks clearly when one is afraid. I guarantee you that.